There's a change happening in the way we live, the way we work, the way we spend our money and make our decisions. We are evolving to be more conscious in our actions in a way that serves the world and makes it a better place. Welcome to The Ethical Evolution. The Ethical Evolution podcast is brought to you by Ethical Change Agency. I'm Bindi, I'm the founder, and my mission is to help ethical entrepreneurs and holistic healers to find their voice through spiritual coaching and podcasting. I'm honoured to bring you the stories of those who create change through healing, kindness, innovation, purpose, and spirit. Understanding that to create collective change, we need to be the change. It all begins with us. Ellie Lee has been an on-camera personality for over 10 years and has been featured on E, MTV, VH1, The Wendy Williams Show, iHeartRadio, Complex and much more. She's done everything from interviewing music artists like BTS and Jennifer Lopez to hosting live morning television, covering red carpets and being an on-camera commentator for the hottest pop culture shows. Nowadays, Ellie is a certified mystical life coach from Masters of Self University. After spending time diving deeply into her wounds and learning how to truly transform trauma into power, she now does the same with her coaching clients. Ellie is a breath of fresh air who tells it like it is and has elevated to a new way of being after many years in Hollywood. I hope you get as much joy out of our conversation as I did. Welcome Ellie to The Ethical Evolution. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Now, I'm also equally excited to have you here today. Now, uh, you're coming to us all the way from San Diego. For those people who've been living under a rock and don't know who you are, can you please go ahead and tell us? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ellie Lee. And I am, well, you know, it, it's a it's a loaded question because <laughs> I've spent most of my career um, being an on-camera personality and an actress. And every time I go on a podcast now, it's like it's all changing because I'm really now focused on what's called a mystical life coach at this organization that I work for called Masters of Self University. And I help people heal heal their biggest traumas and wounds um, through energetics. And um, that's really me in a nutshell. And I think you found me on Instagram. I'm really active on social media. And I'm just in a place where I can really feel my soul is here to share her journey of really coming home back to ourselves, back to our power, back to the innate truth of who we are. And so, um, yeah, I've been really spending the last four years, like in this really big shift in my life, shift of many shifts, right? Deaths of many deaths and rebirths and things like that. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm a mystical life coach and master of self university is how I best describe myself. I love that. And and you are right. I did find you on Instagram. And and let me tell you the story from this side of the globe. I was um I was sitting at the hairdressers waiting actually, and I was like <sighs> scrolling through Instagram as you do, you know. And um, you came up in my feed, and I was like, I I um. I actually read energy as, as a spiritual coach and I'm, I'm also a psychic. Anyway, I saw you and I'm, I saw you. Can I just say, oh. I saw you. And I was like, um, there's something going on here. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, I've seen you somewhere and you look mm. familiar, but I don't know where. And then I kind of had to go down the rabbit hole and I was like, I just know I need to speak to you. That's all I know. And this is what the universe does to me. It goes, you need to speak to this person. And there's a reason, there's a reason for all of these things. And so we reached out to you and you graciously said, yes, let's do it. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so for those people who are also going, hang on, I know you from somewhere, do you want to just give us your, your, your reel on where, where you've been? Yeah. So I've spent, so I spent the last 15 plus years and I still have a, um, a foot in Hollywood and in the world of pop culture and entertainment, but I've been an on-camera personality for a really long time. So I've been on 
I'm a host for MTV right now. Um, I was an on-camera host for VH1, which is a big music network. And I was on a morning show with um, a man named Nick Lachey. I don't know if anyone knows, but he was the lead singer of 98 Degrees. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And I was a the video on-camera host for iHeartRadio. And I've been featured on People. I used to do like the Wendy Williams show. So a lot of things here in America that have to do with music, acting, pop culture. I did a lot of segments on E! Uh, so I've been, and then I've done some independent films. And so, um, perhaps you have seen me in there. I'm really known on the internet for my viral interviews with a lot of Korean pop stars. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of my claim to fame for a while. Um, and now I'm totally on a different path (laughs) and now I'm here going, okay, so that was before my awakening. And now this is my life after the awakening. And it has been a wild, wild, wild journey. So for those people who are going, okay, yep, that's all cool. Like, what's your backstory? How did you how did you get to oh, here? Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a long one. In, in long story short, I've I grew up in a very Christian religious household. Um, my mother is the daughter of a pastor, and so church was ingrained in me since I was in the womb. And all of my life, I've always felt like I, I really struggled with like really deep depression, like even as a child. I would go up to my mom and I'd be like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I feel a lot of deep emotions and I don't know what's wrong. And, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a kid of the late 80s and, you know, growing up in the late 80s and 90s, they don't really talk about um, mental illness or depression or any kind of emotion in general. We don't live in a world where now it's changing, right? Thank mm. God. But for the most part, it was like, you don't talk about emotions. You suck it up, you buttercup and go out there, hustle and grind and make something out of yourself, Right. And so as a kid, I had all these deep emotions and I was deeply sensitive and nobody nurtured that or nobody knew how to do that. And so I just struggled my entire life. I would constantly be spiraling in like deep cycles of depression, of anxiety, of unworthiness. And when I was 16 years old, they put me on my first antidepressant. And so for the next, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years, I was up and down on all kinds of antidepressant pills. I've been on so many. I've been on high doses. I've been on medium doses. I've been on low doses. And every time I'd go to my psychiatrist, I'd be like, I'm not right. And she'd be like, well, here's more and here's more. So there's never been an addressing of why I am the way that I am or why I feel the way that I do. And then in 2019, I moved to Los Angeles because I booked a big gig. And I was like, this is the start of my new life. Like, look out, Hollywood. Like, here comes the star. (laughs) And when I got to L.A., everything got really quiet. And I started spiraling. And I hit the rock bottom of the rock bottoms. And I knew that something had to change. And I heard just like this tiny little voice that was like, it's time to do some inner work. And I've always heard of inner work. And I I started dabbling in meditation a year before. But like, I never I never really understood any of it. And I because I grew up so religious so Christian, we don't talk about anything of like self-love or like self-help or like personal development. All of it is kind of like, look to Jesus and he's going to save you. And that's the end of the story. Right. And so I started doing inner child work. And when I started doing it, I was like, oh, I am messed up (laughs) and I have no self-worth and I don't understand at all what self-love is. And thus began the journey into my healing journey. And I always say the healing journey is inevitably a spiritual journey because it's, it's the journey of coming back to the truth of who you are, which is divinity. Right. And so one day I'm, I'm doing all this inner child work and I'm seeing 11, 11 everywhere. And I thought that I was going crazy and I had nobody to ask because it's not like any of my friends were quote unquote spiritual or on the path. And so I Googled it. I said, am I going crazy? I'm seeing 11, 11 <laughs> everywhere. And then up came angel numbers mm-hmm. and thus began this whole new world of like, what is this? And it was so beautiful because for the first time, it wasn't something that was shoved down my throat. It was, I'm going to find God and whatever that means on my own. And this was the entry into all of that. Yeah. And uh, wow, there's there's a lot under that, uh, Ellie. And, you know, I had a very similar kind of experience to you, you know, like when I, I first kind of had my awakening, I was like, I started seeing the angel numbers and I still do yeah. every day. And totally. um, <laughs> to the point where you'll look at a clock and it'll always be like one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, you you become more conscious and you see the things that no one else sees, you know, and you're kind of like, is it just me? And then when you start to find your tribe, you're kind of like, oh, so it's not just me. 
Right. So mm-hmm. um, with your awakening and, and, and now, um, you know, taking your pain and turning it into power for others, yeah. um, how does that look for you today? Oh, my gosh. So, you know, when I entered into the spiritual and the healing world, I was like, okay, give it to me. Like, whatever you say, I'm going to try it. So I spent around almost three years of trying everything that I could read upon that I could, that I fell upon. Like, you know, when something like hits, you were like, okay, I'll try that. Mm. And so, you know, there's, there's so much stuff in the spiritual world of like manifestation and reprogram the subconscious mind and, and everything. Right. So I was diligently meditating twice a day. I was taking breath work classes. I was taking cold showers. I was reprogramming my subconscious mind. I was self affirmationing myself to death. <laughs> I was EFT tapping, you know, I was doing everything and anything. I tried plant medicine and I knew three years in, I was like, okay, so I've been doing all of this and I know, and I can feel that there's a shift in me, but why am I still deeply depressed? And why do I still judge myself? And why do I still hate others? And why am I still like repeating these same patterns over and over and over again? And so I knew that everything I was doing was cool, but it wasn't getting to the root. And so one day I just started openly speaking to the universe. And I said, I don't know who, what, when, or how. I was like, I don't know what any of that looks like. And I'm not attached to anything. I was like, but I know that what I'm doing is not deep transformational work. So please guide me. And I would just say this constantly. I would just speak it out constantly. And then one day I got super triggered by something and I I was like losing my mind. And the only place that I felt comfortable in was in nature. So I took my dog and I'm driving up into the mountains And in my podcast search bar, I literally wrote the words like my mind is going crazy. And this one podcast episode popped out called mental programming. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And I clicked on it. And as soon as I heard now my mentor speak, I heard my soul going, this is the next chapter. And so everything I heard from her was so practical. It was so groundbreaking. And it felt it was like so tangible for me that I knew that I had to study under her. And so I jumped into a six month program of becoming a mystical life coach. And I really thought, Bindi, when I joined this, I was like, oh, I'll learn a few things. And it was like, no, strap in because your life is about to radically change in the most brutal and most beautiful ways. And what this work has taught me was everything that I wasn't doing, which was I spent the first three years Con- this is what I've known my entire life is just running away from my pain. Right. Mm. So even when I was meditating, I wasn't meditating from a place of power. I was meditating to not feel what was coming up. So I would feel anxious. I would feel fear. I feel lonely. I'd be like, I got to go meditate. So I'd go meditate. And then for that 20, 30 minutes, I come out, I'd be like, Oh my God, I feel so much better. And what I realized now is all I was doing was escaping. All I was doing was running because I was so afraid to feel what was in there. And now this, this teacher was now teaching me, we don't run from the pain. We go into the pain by connecting to our divinity, by opening up our heart chakra, by loving the light, going uh, loving the darkness with the light that we are. And that was the radical shift that I needed. And I've been doing this work now for almost two years diligently, and it has changed me in the most profound ways. And I know that this is just the beginning of my journey, like the evolution. We're infinite beings, right? The evolution never stops. It just keeps going. And for me, like I didn't come all the way on earth in this incarnation, in this life to suffer as much as I have to just go, Oh, I'm just going to stop here. Like, no, even though it's been, it's been so hard and it continues to be so hard. I can feel like, Oh, I came here to be a warrior of the light and the warrior of the light. That's not a passive process. That's an active process. And it means constantly going in. It means constantly connecting. It means constantly facing your shit over and over and over again. And that's what it's taught me. And so now I've been almost nine months off of my antidepressants that I was on for 20 years because I realized, Oh, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm powerful enough to face anything and everything that comes my way with the light that I am. And that's the work I now coach others on and the work that I consistently and constantly do on myself. And this is it, you know, healing is a constant thing. We we are evolving humans every minute, every day, you know. It doesn't stop. It, it's not a, you know, hit it, quit it kind of thing. It's like continual kind of thing. And you've just got to keep going. And, you know, for a coach, People might be like, well, you know, you haven't healed your stuff. But the thing is, if you have a coach that isn't working on themselves, that's a problem, right? right? Yep. Um, they've also, they're, everybody's on a healing journey. Some are aware of it, some aren't. Um, but one thing that came up for me as you were talking, Ellie, was, you know, you talked about inner child work and I had a similar thing where I connected with that part of me. And, you know, we, we can look at our parents and and – 
you know, people objectively could go, oh, you know, your parents weren't that bad. And no, they weren't. Yeah. It's just that everybody's experience is different and they did the best they could do, right? Um, and back in the 70s, 80s for me, you know, um, it was a whole different world to what it is today. Yeah. So, you know, recently I uh, I met Marianne Williamson and mm. she was here in Brisbane and she one thing she said that really hit me and I felt it was she was talking about inner child and she goes, you don't need to connect with your inner child, you need to connect with your inner adult. And I was like, ooh, hang on a minute, I get where you're going, but also there's people who actually haven't honoured who they were as a child and understood the pain that you just get programmed with. You have no choice yeah. in it, no no yeah. consciousness of it. Yeah. And when you understand that, oh, this is what all this other stuff that now I'm in my 30s, 40s is mm. like this is how this is all manifesting. Yeah. And if I can heal right. this back here, imagine what I'm going to feel like right now. Yeah, that's it. Is that is that the experience that you had? Yeah. Well, first up, uh, two things. Love what you just shared. And that's what a lot of people do, right? Even my clients that I work with, like, well, my parents did the best they could. And yes, that's truth. But it doesn't mean that they didn't cause harm along the way. Mm. And that's now our stuff that we need to heal within ourselves. And so, you know, when we get triggered, right, when uncomfortable feelings come up for us, that's an aspect of our wounded inner child that's showing up in that moment, Right. So it's not about like connecting to your inner adult. It's about no connecting to your inner light Mm. and uh, being there with your inner child and letting them also connect to their inner light. Because a lot of inner child work that I did for a long time just felt like I was coddling my inner child, like let your inner child play and like let them out. Like I'm a 36 year old woman. Like I want to be an adult as an adult, Mm. which means that inner child, like let's grow them up. And that's what, that's a part of what we teach. We call it the mystical parent to your inner child. We, we coddle and we like baby our inner child, but like our inner child is also a divine being. Mm. They are also divinity. So, and they, and like my teacher always says, she's like, they're closer to divinity at five years old than you are at 36 years old. Right. Yeah. And so us babying them keeps them trapped. The, the work that I do is, Hey, I'm right here with you, but you can also do this. And you got this grow that light, connect back to who the truth of who you are. And you, when you do that over time, over and over again, every time you're triggered, every time this wounded aspect of you shows up over time, that child goes, Hey, I'm good. I'm growing up. We're not stuck and trapped here anymore. And then that's when you're like, Oh my God, that's the work right there. And that's what we're all trying to do. We're trying to heal our wounded inner child so that we can now just be grown, mature, conscious adults that like constantly just come from love and power in every, in every way and everything that we do. And I, I just recently um, experienced the results of that healing. Um, like mm. when you get into relationships or you see yourself reacting in relationships and things like that and you go, well, I used to do this because of this and yes. now I don't need that anymore. And you're kind of like, who am I now? <laughs> you know? Yep. I, I noticed that in myself and I'm like, well, I used to do this because I had a hole I needed to fill and I don't have that anymore so I don't need this toxic shit now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's it. Like to have okay. that that power within yourself and to have that self awareness, mm. like just that healing is like it's a bit like a drug, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is in a beautiful way because you're coming back to you, mm. right? We're we're also wounded and we're also emotionally fragile. We have no idea what's actually in there. Mm. Right. So many clients that like I see or colleagues that I see who like stop doing this work, it's like you're not accessing who you really are. All you got to do is unclog the pipes Mm. so that you can connect and really be the magical, powerful being that you are. We are all like this, but it is a choice on whether or not you're going to go on the path to find out who that really is or not. Mm. It's funny you should say (laughs) clearing the pipes because I was talking to Oh, some someone spiritual or mystical the other day and we were talking about energy and all this kind of stuff and um, they saw it as as exactly two drain pipes that basically yeah. come through you and, and, and go out to the universe and the light within you can't get through those pipes if you don't clear them out. And yeah. I think the whole problem with us is that we all need a good spiritual colonic. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I think we need to make a T-shirt out of that, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. I'm in. <laughs> um, so tell us what the experience of uh, coaching with you was like. 
my gosh. So the work that we teach is we teach a very step-by-step process on how to do this work so that one day you'll never need a coach anymore, right? Everything we teach is connecting back to what's within. You know, I used to always hear like, go within, go within, go within. And I'm like, what does that mean? Mm. (laughs) I can logically understand like, okay, go within, like just like, I don't, but I don't really understand. And it was through this work. I was like, oh, I get it. It is about learning how to connect and open your heart chakra. And most of us, when we experience trauma, especially when we're young, everything that we experience that is painful, we learn how to close because it's not safe. So a lot of us are walking around as closed hearted beings. And when you are feeling fear, shame, guilt, unworthiness, and you're not open your heart to all of it, it's like the doors are closed so nothing can flow in, which means nothing can get transformed, right? Nothing can actually heal. That's why people always say like, oh my God, he broke my heart. But it's like, my, my teacher always says, quote, like open hearts can never break, only closed hearts do. And that's what it is. And it's like, we blame like love and the person, all these things. And it's like, no, they're just there to bring all of the aspects of you that are crying out for your love and attention. And so the work that we teach from week one is learning how to start connecting and opening your heart chakra. And this is what's so messed up about patriarchy in this world. It's like, everybody tells you the mind is the center of our beingness. And it's like, no, the heart is. And if everybody knew this, this world would be a very different place. And that's why most of us are so trapped up here because that's the, that's where we created safety. Because when you're stuck in the mind, you don't have to feel the depths of what's actually coming up for you, right? So thus are the overthinkers and like the, you know, everybody's just like thinking, overthinking, 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 overthinking. Yeah, it's because you're distracting yourself from going within and feeling what is up there, what is down there and what's wanting to come up that's wanting to be felt by you. And so- Every single week, I'm just teaching you how to connect and how to open. And we're teaching you how to get from the trigger down to the inner child wound. And what we really are teaching is alchemy, right? We're all alchemists. I remember there's this famous book called The Alchemist, right? And I read it and I was like, that's cool. Wish I could do that. And it's like, no, we can all do that. And Mm -hmm. how does alchemy actually work? Because if we all truly understand that we are all energy, right? This is science. People love science. This is science. Every thought that you have, every emotion you feel, every behavior you do is all energy, Energy can never die. It doesn't just disappear. So even in the spiritual world, it's all about like release it, uh, somatic, everything is release it, release it, release it. And it's like you're releasing it, but you're not transforming it, which means it comes back. Mm. So you can do as much like breath work and all this stuff, right? And for that moment, it feels great because you brought a higher energy into that moment. But then a week later, why am I triggered into the same thing? Well, because it came back because all you did was release it. And then who's it going out to, you know, Mm. like it's going out to the people out in the world. And like, that's just more darkness. Our job is to go, Oh, this is coming up. Let me transform this. And how do we do that? We let whatever low frequency is showing up that you have within your energetic field. And we let them flow through your heart chakra because the frequency of unconditional love is where that vibrates. And if any, anybody who can feel anything, you know, that unconditional love is a much higher frequency than when you feel shame. And so when you entrain those two over and over and over again, shame has no other choice but to go, oh, crap, I'm transforming. And then one day it goes back into unconditional love. It goes back into power. And that's the work that I teach people every single week. And is it it this work takes willingness and devotion. This is not a let me hop in and out. This is a how much are you going to show up for yourself every single day? Mm. every single time you are triggered. Like if Bindi, if you and I are talking right now and you trigger me, I know how to drop in and just process as we're speaking Mm. because I'm opening up my heart. And that's the work. And the more of us that do this, watch what happens. Like my partner is, my partner inspires me constantly because man, his soul came here to do the damn thing. And like, I know that we're contracted because he knew, because I like, you know, we all have caves that are darker than others, right? And when and and I have a lot more trauma, let's say, than my boyfriend does. But like the way that he goes into himself every day, like, wow, when I'm in the depths of my pain and I don't want to go in and I'm running all of these programs of like wanting to avoid and wanting to escape and I see him just go in and like love himself unconditionally. I'm like, Ellie, there it is right there. Go in. And it's just this inspiration of like, man, like why waste time of me running all running away from myself when I could spend that time going into myself? And it's like we prolong our journey by avoiding, by suppressing, by drinking, by drugging, by Netflixing, by all of these things. And it's like those are all these golden opportunities to just take a to to unravel another piece of yourself, uh, to activate another place of your power. And it's like 
I'm going through so many rounds of all of that, like ego deaths of like, okay, let that part of me die that wants to escape. Let that part of me die that wants to suppress. And I just keep going in, keep going in. And I know that as I keep going on this journey, like it will just get more monumental, more like just badass. And so that's, so again, back to your question, like that's the work that I teach and coach people on. I love it. I love it. And as you talk, I just have a million things coming through. Um, and, and one of those is, um, you know, for someone like me who's, who's done a lot of work, um, yeah. even now, like part of my process is I go, why am I doing this thing? Like, mm-hmm. and I'll sit and I'll listen and I'll be like, no, 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 just quiet everything and just listen and wait for the answer. And if you can quiet things enough and connect like yes. deep within, that answer comes to you. Whether you want to hear that shit or not, it comes yeah. through, you know, and you, and you yeah. got to face it. And I think that's all part of it is actually facing what is underlying these mm-hmm. behaviours and things that you're doing or whatever you're trying to numb or kill or hide from or not feel. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's so many people walking this planet today who are literally just meat suits not feeling a thing, right? Yep. not feeling a damn thing. They're so stuck in their head they don't even understand there's anything below it. Yep. And you yep. would see those people every day, right? Um, mm-hmm. And we can't make people connect to that other side of themselves. Something's got to be the catalyst for that, Yes. for that yep. change and that healing. Um, and unfortunately, like through all the conversations that I have, um, it takes something really radical for people to go, Oh, that spiritual side of me, I kind of need it now because it's going to yep. be what gets me through. Yep. And exactly that's it. the same for both of us, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, I spent a, I think everybody goes through this on their journey where, like, I wanted to save everybody. So I would be like, you need to do this work and you yeah. need to awaken and all these things. And the lesson that I learned from that was like, you don't need to make anyone do anything. Like that is not your job. That is not, you're not here to be Mr. Captain, Mrs. Captain, save a man and a woman, you know, like that's their choice. Mm. And your job, you do you. And if, if the ripple of what you're doing helps somebody else to go like, okay, I'm at the depths of my shit right now. And like what she's got, I want to learn more. Then that's where I come in and help guide and facilitate or whatever. But my job is not to save you. Your job is to save yourself. And that was a big realization for me on my journey too, is like, nobody's coming, Mm. you know? And for so long, like I was brainwashed to believe, well, Jesus is coming and Jesus is this and Jesus is that. And it's like, we got it all, even Jesus teachings, we got it all twisted. Jesus came here to tell us what we are, which is the divine. Mm. He came us to teach us what we are, which is we are him. We are all each other. We are one. We come from the same thing. And we are all divine divine beings of the light. And to learn that now and see that now and see what religion did to me in a lot of ways, like, man, like I was like, oh my God, I it's always it was always something outside of me that I needed. And this work, and I'm sure you understand this deeply, is like, no, it's me that's here to save me. It is me that I'm looking for. It is me who I keep reaching out to. Like, it's not out there. It's inside here. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we are not the firefighters. We're not the one who's got to get the hose and hose it down, yep. right? People will find their own hose. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's well, that was probably one of the first lessons I learned, um, in the first podcast I ever did. Um, I was telling this my story and it was all the things that had happened to me and they all went wrong at the same time. I'm like, why am I telling people this? And then I sat and I listened to that question and it was, you know, it doesn't matter about the fall. It's about getting back up again. And to also understand that wherever your problems lie, there you are. You're the common denominator wherever you go, right? So it's like looking in the mirror and going, what is the part I play here and how can I change that? Yes. Yeah, The my my mentor, she's here to bring the 20 universal ways of oneness. Basically there are 20 spiritual decrees that are here to lay the framework for humanity to enter into the new golden age of harmony. And the first universal ways of oneness is the way of responsibility, which is taking divine responsibility over yourself. Mm. You know, we've spent most of our lives just blaming everybody. You know, anytime somebody makes you feel uncomfortable or makes you feel anything, well, well, he's the asshole and he's the problem and she's this and she's that. And how could she ever say that? How could she ever do that? And it's like, 
Take responsibility over yourself because that person came in as a little gift to trigger something within you that needs your love and attention right now. And becoming the way of responsibility is not easy because I've spent my whole life projecting and blaming <laughs> everybody else for why I'm so goddamn unhappy. And now it's like every time someone triggers me, I go, gosh, damn, I'm like, that one really hurt. I really got to go into that. And it's empowering, you know, because now you, you're not the victim anymore. It's not what's being done to you. It's being done for you. So now that you're here, how am I, what am I here to grow and how am I here to grow? And that's what it is. Like it's in the pain where your power lays. Mm, absolutely. And I think that's where we're all unified is, is, yeah. you know, our pain and our healing. And um, I love, I love how you say that, you know, really, I think, if we can just connect to that, like uh, you see things so differently when people show up in your life, like Mm -hmm. you just go, what are you doing here? What's, what's the lesson? What's the message? I'm listening. Um, and you go, oh, and it's sometimes it doesn't hit you straight up and then you, you you know, in an off moment you go, oh, I get it now. (laughs) And and if you can just detach, I think sometimes it helps if you can just detach from the situation and like, zoom right out and go ah yep this is not what I thought it was because when you're so in the moment you don't see it the same way if you zoom out a bit I think that's a really good lesson to be able to do totally Mm. yep Mm -hmm. now um I know that you love getting behind the mic uh and always have now you're also involved in a podcast too right yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us yeah, about that. So we have a yeah, we have a podcast called called Masters of Self University, and um, it's headed by basically my mentor Rachel Fiore, and then my boyfriend and I host um, each episode as well. And she does her solos episodes, and then we do episodes together, and then with all the other coaches, and we really just talk about this work and everything that we're moving through. And she's obviously here to give higher level teachings, and so that's what she does. And the rest of us just really talk about you know what we're moving through, and it's it's insane because the content never stops, right? It's not like it's uh, this journey is like, no, it's always going to give you something to talk about. Right? <laughs> and so um, that's what the podcast is. And it, we're almost 150 episodes in. Wow. And um, it's been a journey because it's I started the podcast at the beginning of this work. And so I have I have my evolution just documented in audio and video um, <laughs> format, which I'm sure for you too, like um, uh, documenting it. And that's how I see social media too. Like, social media for me right now is a diary of my entire journey because I haven't stopped making videos since I started awakening. And, you know, it's interesting too, because the most part of my Instagram was all about my career of like being with celebrities, mm-hmm. right? Most of my Instagram was like, look at me and look who I'm interviewing and look, I'm at the Grammys and look, I'm at MTV. And do you see me? And do you love me? And do you validate me? And that industry and that whole thing made me so sick. And like, I was mentally and emotionally in constant distress because I was wanting the world to just validate me and to love me and to, to make me feel like I was worth the damn. And then to have this huge shift, you know, I talk about this a little bit on my social media of like when I made the shift into actually, I'm going to talk about my journey and I'm going to share all these things that I'm learning. I lost 10,000 followers like straight up Mm -hmm. and I had to work through everything that was coming up for me in terms of like, what do people think about me? And like, people don't like me anymore and all this stuff. And it's like all those aspects of you need to die and they need to be healed and need to be alchemized because where you're going, like people are always going to hate on you. People Mm. are always going to come for you, especially when we're showing up. Like I always say, people who make uh, content on this kind of work, we are the most vulnerable. We are the ones where when they come shoot at you, you're shooting at something that's so personal to me. And I have to be so strong and so powerful enough that when you're shooting ammo at me, it just flicks off of me. And so it's been a journey of me as I lose followers, as I get trolled, as I people bring me down and all these things. I've, how, how tall are you going to stand in the midst of all of this? And so it's just been a really beautiful um, learning lesson after learning lesson and just all, all these opportunities for me to grow. Like I had this video recently that went viral in less than a week. It hit a million views and it was a really personal video. I didn't even know if I wanted to post it because it was something that I worked through with this trauma that I was experiencing. And man, like I got so much love and then I got so much hate and the hate was brutal. Like people were mocking me, making fun of me, ripping me to shreds. And I had this moment where I was like, I can't share anymore. Like this is too much. And then when that passed, I was like, girl, find your power and like really drop in and alchemize all that that's coming up because they are going to come for you. And my boyfriend said it the best. He's like, when your light shines, 
it will shine in parts where the darkness is so dark. And that's what I, many of us are doing. As we become more light, we are shining on the darkness and the aspects of people that they don't want to see. And the lesson that I learned from that is every comment where I, where, where I would see someone dismissing me or bringing me down or trashing me, right? I had this moment where I go, oh, that's what was done to you. And you haven't healed that within you. You haven't found love within that, within you. So when somebody is talking about something that's so vulnerable, you can't understand it at the level of consciousness you are, and you don't want to understand. So you try to bring people down where you are. And it's those moments where, oh, because I find love and compassion for me, now I can see what's going on within you. Now I have love and compassion for you. And I know this has got nothing to do with me. And that's power. And then that's what keeps me going. And I'm like, okay, bring it on actually, because every time you do that, that's a, that's a chance for me to become more powerful. So let let you troll me so that I can alchemize whatever comes up for me. So it's just, it's just fascinating. Like this whole thing um, is just so interesting and empowering in so many ways. And in that case, it's really the haters are fighting the light, aren't they? They're trying to yes. keep their darkness and fight yes. the light. Um, but really, you know, I, I, when I started, cause when I started, Oh God, it was nearly five years ago now where I really got my face out there more. Um, yeah. I, I, and, you know, you go through that, in, you know, all of the things, you know, you, you're scared what people are going to say about you, all this kind of yeah. stuff. And I reached a point where I just didn't give a shit. I don't, I don't care. Say yeah, what yeah. you want about me. <laughs> That's your problem, not mine. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, if anybody said anything awful, I, I had an automated response that was just, um, I hope you find what you're looking for. I wish you well. Yeah. I wish you love. And you leave yeah. it at that. And that, who can come back and be a shithead after you do that? Like hundred percent, who? <laughs> and if yeah, they do, 100%. you walk away. You don't engage. Yep. You walk away. Um, so I think you know it's just like this contrast we need in life, and this balance is that you can't have one without the other. So yeah, yeah you might have you know a million followers on Instagram or whatever it is, but there's going to be a portion of them who are haters. They're just oh, yeah. there. And this is the thing when I was in Hollywood last year, and and hanging out with a whole bunch of stars. Um, at, I saw behind the curtain and you would have seen yes. this too. I saw behind the curtain and I was like, oh, this isn't quite what I thought it was. Yep. And I came home and I was like, oh, I like my little life. <laughs> and, you know, it's like this facade, you know, and it isn't what people think it is. And people are just, they're not in their lives. They're just going through the motions of it. And then there's all these people who are trying to cling on and 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 get that piece of fame, that piece of stardom. If I'm just yeah. in their orbit, maybe something will happen. And it's like, just see people for who they are, you know? Like, yeah. you know, I speak to so many people, I don't even realise they're famous till afterwards because I'm, I'm talking to their soul. I'm not talking to them about anything else. Yep. And people yeah. are like, do you know who that is? I'm like, no, the, the, the Ellie, what? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. for me, it's it's super weird. I'll walk away, I go, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So I think you would see, you would have experienced a lot of that when you were in those spheres uh, a lot, right? Oh, yeah. I've seen it all. Yeah. I've seen it all. And, you know, some of those people are the most, the saddest people. Um, you know, and that's, the, and that's the Kool-Aid that they feed us, right? Is, well, if you're rich and you're famous, then that's it. That's the pinnacle of this life. And I have seen time and time again, that's nothing. Mm. If all that stuff, all of that just brings out what's already in there that is not healed. And I've seen a lot of sadness and I've seen a lot of, um, yeah, you know, I struggled so many years of being in that industry. And like, I didn't know then, but I could feel that my soul was like, you're not of this. Mm. You're not meant to be here. And I, I spend so much time just crying by myself or like, even like when I interview people on red carpets, like I would tear up because I would be looking at everything and I'd be like, I'm not supposed to be here. And I didn't know what that meant at that time, but my ego was like, you have to make it and you have to stay in this. And this is what you are here for. So I was constantly fighting against, this is what I want. And then what I didn't know was my soul going, this is not it, Ellie. Like, this is not where you're supposed to be. And it wasn't until I had my awakening where I was like, oh, now I get it. And I've had to have so many layers of that aspect of me die. And it's, they're still dying because constantly on social media, I'm seeing people blow up, you know, like people that I used to like be in the ring with of like, there's this movie and this TV show, and they're so successful and everybody's praising them and loving them. And every single time I see that, there's an aspect that shows up that goes, I want that or I miss that. And I'm like, oh, okay, you're still there. You need to die. I love you. 
but we didn't come here to do all that. We came here to experience facets of that. You know, when your soul is like drawn to something, but then your ego takes over. And so I thought my entire life, like I was meant to be a movie star and that's what I needed to do. And it's like, no, my soul is here to express being a performer, but it doesn't mean it's going to look like that. It's going to look like something that you don't even fully understand or know yet. And so let that part of you die because you know you're not you're meant to be a part of that. That has been like the biggest feeling of liberation for me because I felt like I was in a prison that I put myself in trying to be of that world, trying to fit in, trying to have everybody love me. And every single gig I booked, every room I was ever in, I would cry silently because I was like, these are not this is not where I'm supposed to be and I don't know what to do. Mm. And so now being able to just completely walk away and be okay with that has been freedom that I cannot even explain to you. Mm. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time speaking with uh, trauma and recovery specialists um, in Hollywood who deal Mm. with celebrities on the daily. And the one thing, you know, all the fame, fortune, all that kind of stuff, the one thing that helps them through that recovery is the spirituality side of it. And when they connect with themselves, that's the only way they can recover and heal and get past yep. the pain they're trying to numb. Yeah. And yeah. it's just funny that it, it doesn't matter who you are, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how many dollars you got in the bank, doesn't matter how many followers you got, we all have the same pain. And this is, yep. again, coming back to what unifies us. Yes, totally. Oh, Beautiful. Ellie. I could talk to you all day, mate. Seriously, I could. Yeah, we did. I love her. Let's go. <laughs> I think we're going to have to do a series. I think yes, that, yes, let's do it. Yes. Now, mate, if people want to get in touch with you and learn more about yeah. your coaching, where can they go? Yeah, so um, my Instagram and TikTok is at L-E-Y-J Lee. And there's a link in there where it is the links to everything. You can um, work with me if you're couples. I do relationship coaching. I do one-on-one. I, me and another coach, we do a lot of group classes, and we really teach you this work. And so you can find me there. If you just want to follow my stuff, it's at L-E-Y-J Lee, and that's where it is. That's where I live. Lovely. Now, yeah. i got the last big question for you. Yeah. What's the change you'd like to see in the world, and how can we bring it to life? I think the biggest thing for me right now is equality. And I mean that in the sense of I, something that I've really, really always has been a part of my soul. I came here with this imprint is I love animals so much. Um, I became a vegan back in 2014 because I read a book about factory farming and I've been fostering um, shelter dogs since 2004. And so I just always have this connection to animals because they're, they are purity. They are innocence. They are who we are without conscious, like ego. Right. And what breaks me is how we treat animals and nature and mother earth as if they're below us. Mm. And for me, that's what breaks my heart the most. And yes, there are so many things that I want for humanity. And the biggest thing is, is we get to a place where we really elevate out of treating anything, any living being like they are beneath us, you know? And when we get deeper into that, like sex trafficking and rape and all of these things is I want, uh, I work hard on myself to be the change that I want to see in the world. Like it's one thing for me to be like, I'm a vegan and everyone should be a vegan. It's like, if you're not changing the fact that you hate people who aren't or because there is hate, I have hate and judgment that live within me when I see people abusing animals, abusing children, whatever it may be, tearing down nature, like all of these things. I can feel the hate. I can feel the judgment. You know, I went through this thing recently where I was watching all of this factory farming and all these pigs being abused and it was awful. And I looked at my partner and I said, I was like, I just hate humans sometimes. And he's like, that's what needs to be healing right now. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can stand powerfully for the children and nature and beings. But if you carry hate, you're, you're, you're vibrating at the frequency of those people who are doing, doing those things to animals. And I was like, that's it right there. So I want to stand powerfully for those people and be a voice without all of the dark, the frequencies of hate and judgment. And I'm big, better than you. And I'm bigger than you. And it's like, let me heal that all that within me and be one light that you know, streams out of earth that has healed that aspect. So that one day when I leave this place, I can go, oh, I did what I did. And um, I'm here to help, you know, like all of us, we're here to help humanity shift into a higher dimension, God of oneness, of love, of unity. And it starts within us. And so that's the biggest thing for me right now is equality. 
I love that you just wrapped up the whole message of my podcast and what you just said there. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, I love I love that you're fighting for instead of against. Uh, yeah. because uh, I'm going to give a shout out to my real good friend, Alex, who's um, a trans uh, man in uh, New Jersey, um, who's also a spiritual coach. And, you know, we're, we're always fighting for LGBTQ uh, rights, mm-hmm. um, but it's always um, fighting against the bad and, and, and being, yeah. you know, spewing out the hate when actually if we fight for what's right and support the good instead of the bad, yeah, like we're going to be the right kind of soldier. <laughs> exactly that's it right there and yeah that's exactly what you've summed it up and yep. ellie oh my god i have loved every second with you me thank too. you so much for being yeah. part of the change and being here with me on the ethical evolution thanks for listening to the ethical evolution podcast if you're ready to be the change and would love to work with me on finding your voice through spiritual coaching or creating your own podcast with impact visit ethicalchangeagency.com. Welcome to Entrepreneurs Exposed, where we dive into the stories of visionary entrepreneurs revolutionizing the workforce. Our ongoing mission is to showcase founders and creators doing amazing things in business and beyond. If you're a founder, CEO, tech enthusiast, or someone generally interested in startup land, join me, Adam LaVinter, as I dive into what makes an entrepreneur an entrepreneur. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Electric Acid. Hey, how's it going? You should check out Worship 95, Creating Heaven on Earth. Music to bring you into God's presence and remind you of his promises. Listen on the Autolus app or online at autolus.com forward slash worship 95.